It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. IRG's Health Talk continues. All right, our first guest today is Dr. David Musnick, board certified in functional sports and internal medicine from Peak Medicine. We're talking about something a lot of us don't really think about, scar therapy. You know, a lot of people go through surgery, and boy, I've got my share, Shannon. Uh, but, you know, you don't just let it heal up. You can you can take care of those scars. Yeah, you can take care of scar tissue, and scar tissue can cause some problems in function. And that That's what Dr. Musnick takes care of, is scar tissue. All right, here's Shannon O'Kelly and Dr. David Musnick talking about scar, ter- uh, scar therapy right here on Como. Dr. Musnick, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Tell us about your practice. I mean, I always like our listeners to really understand who we're talking to, your area of interest, and kind of how did you become interested in this specialty area, which is scar tissue? Well, uh, my practice is sports medicine and functional medicine, and treating scars is just one part of my practice, along with treating traumatic brain injuries and treating any musculoskeletal type problem, um, and especially... uh, tendonitis, uh, hypermobile joints, scar tissues, arthritis, all kinds of problems in my practice. How long have you been practicing? 27 years. 27 years, okay. Can I guess I'd call you a veteran, can I? I guess you could. <laughs> yeah, thank you, yeah. Well, being a veteran, have you um, uh, obviously had an opportunity to do a, probably a, a lot of research and uh, looking into uh, treatment and treatment styles and procedures and outcomes? Have you written any books? Yeah, I've, I, I wrote a book called Conditioning for Out of, uh, Outdoor Fitness, and I've written uh, about 10 chapters in, in, in other books, including recently... Uh, chapters on tendonitis and chapters on arthritis. Okay, so today we're going to talk about one of those chapters maybe in that book or one of your areas in practice, and that's scar tissue. So tell our listeners, kind of let's start from uh, kind of physiology 101. What is the body doing when it's scarring down? Whether you cut yourself, tear a tendon, uh, tear a muscle, what's going on in the scar process? Well, the scar process is, is, is something that the body does to heal something, and usually the scars that we're talking about when people have chronic musculoskeletal problems in relationship to scars might be surgical scars, they might be burn scars, they might be a scar where someone's cut. And um, scars can be problematic even if the surgery went fine, Um, but uh, the scar tissue uh, can cause problems in, in, in muscle recruitment so the muscles can be weak and not be able to be recruited even with good physical therapy exercises. Or the scar tissue itself can be painful. Um, or the scar tissue can actually restrict range of motion. And so basically, when you're cut or cut yourself or have surgery, your body's response to that is it's going to heal itself. It's going to heal that tissue. And that healing process is uh, is collagen is laying down, and collagen is the, the, the matrix that our body heals with. Right. And that scar tissue sometimes can be... Um, too much scar tissue, uh, it can uh, cause problems. So tell us kind of what's going on there from kind of the muscle contraction and the muscle strength. So what's what's at root here? So sometimes uh, the, the scar tissue can cause problems, and, and there are a number of things correlated with it, like a, a thicker scar, a red scar, a tender scar, um, larger scars, scars that feel like they're not moving very well. But even scars that seem normal can cause problems in terms of leading to s- uh, aberrant signaling to the spinal cord, leading to muscle recruitment problems, muscle weakness, um, range of motion issues, or even sensitizing the nervous system uh, to be uh, sense pain more easily. So a lot of times uh, when people have scars and they have chronic pain or they have pain that's triggered too easily, the scars are a key area to look at to treat. And we talk about scarring. Sometimes um, we can talk about two two terms. One is hypomobility, and the other one is hypermobility. Maybe you can talk about those two and how scar tissue maybe affects that. Well, scar tissue can actually lead to either either one. It can lead to um, hypomobility of a joint, especially if it's restricting the fascia. Um, it can lead to hypermobility if it's uh, if it's causing muscle recruitment problems and muscles aren't strong enough to stabilize the joint. And then, and then that's hypomobility. And then hypermobility is opposite of hypo. There's too much movement. Too much movement if, if the uh, scar tissue is sending aberrant signals and the, uh, the muscles aren't recruiting very well and aren't strong enough. Uh, this hypermobility and hypomobility is is kind of the playing field that myself as a physical therapist and our profession we kind of we kind of work in this this area all the time but you mentioned something i think it's important our listeners understand you talked about fascia and that's a word sometimes that we hear and i'm not sure the general public understands what fascia is well fascia is connective tissue 
And um, connective tissue uh, can have an influence in the body, especially if there's scarring near it. We continue our conversation on scar therapy. We're talking with Dr. David Musnick. His conversation with Shannon O'Kelly will continue right after this time out on Como. It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. Now back to IRG's Health Talk. All right, our conversation with Dr. David Mustick talking about scar therapy continues now with Shannon O'Kelly on Como. Dr. Mustick, thank you again for coming in. We're talking about scar tissue. Uh, you've done a great job in kind of talking about it from a physiological standpoint and how maybe it can affect a patient from hypermobility or hypomobility and some other things, muscle, lack of muscle recruitment, maybe pain, et cetera, et cetera. How do you assess this? How do you identify a patient that needs your help? What I do and what I, what I would say even physical therapists should do is, is uh, take a scar history, find out when the person got uh, either their surgeries or uh, a cut or a burn, and then find out when problems started happening after that. And then it can be assessed on physical exam. It's palpated to see if it's red or it's tender. And then actually you can do scar testing to see if, uh, the, if, if muscles are weak. You can actually palpate the scar or have an assistant palpate the scar and then recheck the muscles. And if they strengthen, they're recruiting better. Or you can palpate the scar and if the range of motion changes, it means the scar is related to the range of motion. You can also palpate the scar and see if pain sensitivity decreases on a scale of 1 to 10. And, and if you identify someone who may be experiencing scar tissue problems as a physician in your practice, how are you going to intervene? Well, in my practice, what I do is I inject them with local anesthetic because that's the gold standard. Uh, if it's a physical therapy practice, they can do soft tissue work. But also I find it very interesting that if the patient talks about the scar and how it occurred, and talks about any kind of feelings they have about it or how things went from the surgery, it seems like the treatment holds better. And, and so uh, uh, discussing it with the patient, identifying it with the patient, what about what about um, functional activity and exercise? You mentioned uh, your practice is functional, and so are you uh, a proponent of exercising and strengthening and movement? Absolutely. And so after the scar is treated, I would want the physical therapist or I would show the patient myself one or two exercises to start getting muscles that weren't recruiting to start working better. And with the injection, going back to the injection, is the goal of the injection in the scar tissue is to loosen the scar tissue up, make it more flexible. Um, what, what's the goal there? It's interesting. This, the, the scar injections actually change the sodium channel issues in the scar and almost like reset the scar so they're not sending aberrant signals to the spinal cord. And if the scar is causing tightness, it will decrease the tightness in the fascia around it. So there are a number of different uh, things that injection can do. And and believe it or not, the, the scar injections aren't that uncomfortable and they don't go deep. They just go right underneath the scar. Is there a, is there a, a treatment protocol? How many injections does this take? Usually it's two. So you do one session and then if the patient has any improvement in any of the parameters you're looking at, like muscle strength or pain or range of motion, you do a second one within 10 to 14 days and that's it. Is there any typical, off the top of your head, of uh, diagnoses that you can think of that you have really good results with? Any abdominal scars where people have back pain, really good results. Uh, C-section scars, appendectomy scars, so uh, really good results. But I inject scars all over the body. Well, Dr. Musnik, again, thank you for your time. Great information, and thank you for sharing it. You're welcome. All right, you've been listening to Dr. David Mustick talking about scar therapy. He is a uh, board-certified functional sports and internal medicine doc from Peak Medicine. If you'd like more information, go to peakmedicine.com. Uh, I th- I'd always heard rubbing, uh, breaking open a vitamin B capsule and rubbing it on your scar was a good thing to do. Yeah, that's that, that's been said before, but you know what? The best thing to do is mobility and working that scar tissue okay. early on. And that's what physical therapists do. We really go after that scar tissue to improve mobility so you don't, don't get decreased joint mobility. All right. Our next guest, Dr. Lisa Price, right after this on Como.